so this is uh, one of the uh, lecture uh, of our oral radiology series i would like uh, to welcome dr rashid uh, professor dr rashid namun malik uh, who is the principal dean of hbs dental college islamabad region international college of dentistry region 24 and only board member in association of international dentistry as well uh, assalam alaikum sir sir hope you are fine bye sir, sir. Bye, alhamdulillah uh, sir you can start the lecture thank you thank you everyone and uh, i am uh, really thankful to uh, especially the pakistan uh, dental society and uh, experienced dentistry that they have arranged uh, this uh, webinar uh, with special reference to oral radiology on the bite wing and the occlusal techniques uh, i am very much thankful to pakistan dental associations all uh, over pakistan and uh, dental news especially for their media coordination international college of dentistry is a, a master coordinator with uh, experienced dentistry and the pakistan dental society uh, ladies and gentlemen this is our series of oral radiology which we are covering in many months uh, with uh, this reference uh, today is our topic is the bite wing taking of the bite wing x ray and the occlusal uh, x ray technique uh when we are talking of the bite wing x ray it actually is a so wonderful x ray that you can take the upper and lower teeth at once there is no any other radiograph except to opg that you have the facility of knowing all the crowns of upper as well as crown of the lower teeth till to the neck of the teeth lower neck of the teeth in maxilla upper that you have the complete entity of the uh, appearance of uh, upper and lower teeth in one film it uh, gives you detailed investigation of the interproximal caries alveolar crest as well as the pathologies related to the cemento enamel junction right here you see this is the crown and above to crown is the area where there is contact point here there is crown and that is the contact you can very nicely visualize this contact point upper and the lower as well as identity of the filling here and identity of the filling above in when one go that is the crystal bone you can see here crystal bone here crystal bone here up and as well as the crystal bone in the lower thing. then the interproximal caries if it is right here you can detect it very nicely you can detect the interproximal caries here so that is a very important thing where while you are looking at the uh, structures of the bite wing x ray these structures are available in front of you now you see when you take real pathological uh, uh images you see here these are the interproximal caries this is interproximal caries that is interproximal caries as well as there is caries as well so upper and lower teeth interproximal caries are available in one go now the crestal bone defect you can visualize that this is the crystal bone here present but when this is the extracted area you, you can see that there is no crystal bone available in this area no the restoration contour that is a hanging contour this is a very good contour of the restoration there is also a hanging contour right here 
there is also a hanging contour you can see it here so all the hanging contours which are available in upper teeth and lower teeth you can judge it right in one film right here as well as right here so this bite film film is a useful uh, uh, what you say uh, image for upper and lower teeth evaluation in one single go while we take the bite wing x rays we have the mid sagittal plane the patient must be in a very straight line the head should not be tilted forward backward right or left so mid sagittal plane should be in a very straight line while for the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch both arches when the mouth is closed should be parallel to the floor this is maxillary arch level and that is the headrest patient had supported by the headrest and this is the occlusal plane of the maxilla you see this occlusal plane is running in a straight line and that is absolutely perpendicular to parallel to sorry parallel to the floor so that is the alignment of the head in bite wing radiogram this is bite wing film the film is there and there is one leaf here which is extended right from the film it is attached to the film on the back side and there is one extension of the film right here and you bite on this film and that biting of the film that's why it is called bite wing x ray this is a biting of a wing this is like a wing of the aeroplane so this is a, you bite it these are for upper teeth and lower teeth are just below and you bite on this this is called bite wing tab you see bite wing tab is right here and you place you stack right here and that is your film this is the lingual side or palatal side of the uh, oral cavity that is the outside you take you have the horizontal angulation absolutely straight film is placed parallel to the crown like this x ray beam is directly through the contact of the teeth like this will absolutely straight and stabilization is that the patient bites on the bite wing tab or film holder sometimes we use the film holder and generally this film is present there is available in the market you go for the bite wing film and you tab it right there now vertical angulation is sometimes required when you sometimes Uh, go, go for slightly plus point and it is only with the tab this is 0 degree absolute straight but sometimes this palate is in a uh, angular way so when you hold it the film become tilted 20 degree above but it no matter because you are going to the uh, all the x rays in 1 plus 10 are zero level it is accepted that is the position where you take the axis that is the film that is the tab you can use a occlusal plane or you can use slightly above 10 a maximum up to 20 and that is the best angle that is plus 8 if you slightly move above you see this the x ray cone is slightly above and it is slightly tilted and this tiltation to the occlusal plane is approximately plus 8 angle so that plus 8 angle will be favored by because these two cusp will not hinder into the occlusal plane and you will get this beautiful image of the bifid x ray 
for the anterior teeth you see you are going to have a very a big difficulty because you cannot bite the bite wing x ray so generally it is very difficult that we are going to have the bite wing x ray of the anterior teeth we start from the premolar then we go for the posterior molars you have the bite and when you take the bite you are going to get right from the canine up to the seventh molar when you take the bite wing x rays of the third molar it is generally that you have to place a small posteriorly there is no any matter of the dart whether it is down or above because you have the bite wing film you are biting on, on over the surface of the occlusal plate but when the molar is missing then you are going to push the film slightly back so that you can get the image of the posterior aspect as well if the third molar is present it will be up to the third molar but if it is not present you will just extend it more posteriorly so that you can get the bony image as well now this is bite wing holder if you don't have the real film with tag you are going to have this uh, instrument which is called bite wing holder this bite wing holder this film will go into the oral cavity here you are going to have the bite uh, over the molar above and below the mandibular molar and this uh, leg is outside and that is the indicator for the film we are going to place it like this you see this is the outside and that is the tag and that is the film on the occlusal lab when you place in the oral cavity it is like this you see tag is gone the film is in the oral cavity this outside your bite and this tag is coming out and that is the film indicator right here this is the uh, x ray cone you are going to, to place it right there and you are going to get the bite wing x ray how you are going to place the bite wing x ray into the oral cavity the anterior and the posterior distance of the film with the teeth should be equal it should not be that you are tilting it like this that this is touching the tooth and here there is a great difference between these teeth and the film or you are placing it more posteriorly this is the less distance and this is the more distance from the teeth so it must be equal <coughs> from the anterior limit to the posterior limit the film should be absolutely parallel to the occlusal plane like this when you, the patient before biting and that is the film position you are going to place it this is the occlusal plane and that is the film you are going to place you see you must have the equal distance right from the anterior and from the posterior you must have the equal distance and here you are going to get the x ray film exposure and that is the accurate way how you are going to get the bite wing x ray if you are going for the posterior teeth that is your occlusal plane you are going to place your film right here push the tongue towards the opposite side then you are going to have the red like this so that is the two position i have indicated the anterior teeth as well as for the posterior teeth anterior teeth as well as for the posterior now that is for the anterior teeth you see that is canine and up to seven we have taken this radiograph and this is called as the premolar bite wing it covers the distal of the upper and lower canine both premolars first molar and a last portion of the 
at least this portion of the salmon right from the third molar to the salmon we have this regula while we are talking on molar bite wing you i have as i have told you that if the eight is missing you must include the posterior aspect of the bone in your bite wing so that you have a good image of the posterior aspect of the attachment of the periodontal ligament and the alveolar crestas as i have told you that if the third molar is not erupted into the mouth the film should be positioned more anteriorly make sure that one fourth of the film extend posterior to the second you can use the maximum to anterior but slightly you have to include this posterior area this whole bite wing x ray will include 7 6 5 4 but for the pre molar you have the 5 6 7 5 7 6 5 4 and some portion of the 3 here you cannot see the three portion if the lingual tori are present in the mandibular area you say this is torus mandibularis there is a bony bulge on the lingular side of the mylohyoid ridge here you can see a bony bulge and uh, what you are going to do you are not going to place it here you are going to place it after the bulge right here you place the film right here so that you can get the maximum image of the artery make sure the film clears the palatal gingiva at the patient close as the patient closes to keep the film from being pushed into mandible like this that is the mandatory thing to be encountered now that is some time required if you see there is no any tooth present in this area so what is going to happen that you are going to have the bite wind x ray of this area you cannot hold the film in this empty area so what you do that you place a cotton roll here and over the cotton roll you place the tag and then you ask the patient to bite so that will get, get the maximum result of the uh, bite wing x rays of the upper teeth as well as the lower teeth but the middle portion where there is no tooth you place the cotton and you ask the patient to bite over the cotton of the against the so what are the different bite wing uh, x rays errors these errors are very important you see the first error we see the patient is not biting on the bite block or bite wing patient the mouth is aborted and you are not going to get the maximum teeth here you see you have missed lower crown you have mixed the upper anterior portion as well and you, there is a empty space visible this is the first error you are going to see when you are not your patient is not biting over the bite second is the film placement you have placed the film in such a way that you see here this is cut area this is the cut area and the film is not firmly bited here there is more bite here there is less bite so film place is not accurate and there is more area which has not been exposed film bending you see there is a, a film tagging and you see these are the edges you are seeing here and these are the edges you see here this is due to bending of the film and that bending also visible right here as well okay this shows you <coughs> the bending of the x ray film during bite wing x ray you see horizontal angulation if you keep it plus 8 then it is uh, always promising one otherwise there is overlapping of the crown of the 8 to the 7 and crown of the 7 to the 6 same is happening here 
the crown of the eight is overlapping seven, and this crown of the seven is overlapping the six one. So there is overlapping of the coronal portion. And if there is any lesion right here, if there is any lesion right here, it is overlapped by this overlapping of the intercuspal area. So this horizontal angulation is very important that it should be noted while you are taking the biting exam. <coughs> Sorry. Now, cone cut is another uh, very uh, big error. You see, you must have included any canine here. But due to your cone cut, you see this image is no more there. And your, uh, you have placed your X-ray cone up to this level and you have missed this area. This is generally by placing the cone in a right, wrong direction. You see, film is reverse. It they do not happen in routine because now there is the digital uh, X-rays and there is no chance of the reverse film. But sometime, if you take the conventional uh, film, you make it on the reverse side and there is no image because the uh, film is on a reverse side. The three things you must uh, uh, understand very nicely. You see, whenever you take the x-ray, when it is exposure is too less, there is more whitening. If exposure is too high, then there is more darkening. But the correct exposure Bill will do the maximum clarification. Here you see the bone is not visible, right here. You see absolutely bone image is not available here. And here you see the crown is not available. Where is pulp? Where is dentine? Where is the enamel? You don't know where these three structures are gone. Okay, this is due to less exposure of the radiogram. And here, you see that there is missing of the bone. Absolutely no bone available there. And this is due to the too high exposure, which uh, has resulted into loss of the image. But when you have the correct exposure, you see you have all the enamel, dentine, and pulp. Enamel, dentine, pulp. All three are available. Enamel, dentine, pulp. You can distinguish it that all these three here. But in case of a, a, a too high exposure, you cannot distinguish the bone here. But in the less exp, uh, exposure, absolutely no image of any dentine or pulp like this. This is the correct. Now there is digitalized X-ray adjustment and these uh, uh, exposure matters are less uh, available in these latest uh, X-ray film machines. These are the errors. Rain, that uh, plastic uh, uh, instrument which I have told you, when using the rain bite wing instrument, film place is the most common error, that you m miss the pro proper place. Next in line would be overlapping. Third is the most of the other error will not be occur very often. When using the tab, film placement is still the most likely to occur, but the cone cutting and overlap will also frequently be seen. These are the common bite wing error which we have mentioned before in our uh, previous slides. Now, the next is our occlusal view. Occlusal view is a very fantastic view which is used in the oral cavity to identify the large lesion. It determines the buccolingual location. How much extension of the lesion is on the buccal side and how much extension is on the lingual side. And it specially to localize the subject buccolingually. Generally, when you take the periapical x-ray, bite wing x-ray, you take the 
mesial and distance width of our location of the lien but why you take the occlusal you take the bucco and lingual version problems especially if it gives you the development of the anterior dentition and uh, you are easily get the image of the patient who cannot open the mouth very uh, widely and having the trismus if the uh, panoramic view is not available now the head position for the maxilla is parallel to the floor that it should be parallel to the floor for the mandible it should be perpendicular to the floor yani at the 90 degree angle maxilla absolutely at the level of the floor but the mandible become the 90 degree above what is the film position film position centered on the area of the interest where you want to take you to place the film there all white side filling facing the x-ray tube and patient bite gently on the film that is the important thing in film position i just tell you in explanation for the academic uh, point of view this thing you should remember for the maxilla we generally take 65 to 75 degree and a true occlusal view is 90 degree for the mandible it is always 90 degree i just give you the description on the photograph you will understand very easy you see this is maxilla that you have placed the film in the oral cavity your x ray will come at the 65 to 75 degree right here this is the called as the normal occlusal view of the maxilla but if you place the film right here and you take the 90 degree exposure right from the above that 90 degree exposure will result into two maxillary exposure are two maxillary occlusal view there before the maxilla there are two views which are available one is called normal maxillary that is approximately 65 to 75 degree and second is the true one when you take that the exactly the 90 degree with reference to the occlusal film while in case of the mandible it is always 90 degree this is the mandible film you have placed inside the oral cavity and you take the x ray right from we need and that is always 90 t the film position should always be placed at the center of the area of the interest all white side of the film should be facing to the x ray cone and patient should bite gently on the film these are the Uh, film position indication so <clears throat> occlusal techniques exposure setting normal x ray we used to get the pa or bite wing for mandibular pa bite wing and for the true maxillary that is 90 degree that is pa at the bite wing ladies and gentlemen that is the normal occlusal image you see that is the occlusal film we have placed in the oral cavity and that is approximately 65 to 75 degree x ray cone yeah, this you see this x ray cone is approximately taking the exposure right here and it is taking the x ray this is from the front and this is from the lateral side you can imagine this is the occlusal film and we are taking the normal radiograph of the maxillary occlusal and right like this if you are going to take the absolutely true then you are going to place the axillary film at the top and that is the occlusal film and this is the image you are going to get this is the axillary film uh, axillary machine that is the axillary film and you are taking absolutely at the 90 degree and you are going to get this image while you are taking the 60 to 65 to 75 degree 
you are placing the x ray right here and you are placing the film here and you are going to get the 65 or 75 degree and you are going to get the x ray line here in this uh, condition you are going to get the maximum posterior limit of the maxillary pilot but here when you take the 60 degree you take maximum the anterior portion and posterior portion you neglect so that is the important thing that here if you want to get the more occlusal and anterior image you are going to get the 65 degree while if you are going to have the posterior limit then you are going to get the 90 degree exposure that is the what you see that uh, in 65 degree you are going to get the image and as you go posteriorly the widening of the tooth and widening of the image result that is the distortion now look at this film at the right angle the location of the impacted canine is revealed this is 65 degree okay and this 65 degree results into exposure of the canine in a very nice way for the occlusal in children to imagine the anterior development of the, this you are, you are going to take at the 65 degree in the children you are going to get the exact image where the permanent dentition are placed and where the deciduous teeth are right there this is by the anterior or what you say the location of the anterior teeth by the occlusal film that you see this is the very good image here you see the resorption of the root of the deciduous canine and that is the deciduous canine there is development of the cyst around the canine right here and that is the image of the maxillary sinus and that is mid palatine suture that is the incisive foramina right present here so these are the anatomical things which you can see in a occlusal film that is the uh, anterior film when you have taken at the 65 degree see the deciduous lateral incisor this is the permanent lateral incisors this is the permanent central incisor that is the incisive foramina that is the fissure and these all things are so obvious when you take the occlusal film this is another image you see that is the two incisors these are two lateral incisors these are two deciduous teeth available and you can have the image of the incisor now that is uh, if you want to take a slightly on the left side uh, right side you can see that you have placed the film right there and you are going to get the exposure of this side you see one side you have got the exposure second side you missed because you want this side to be identified as compared to that of the right side you can take the closer film of this side so you got the these are the maxillary sinuses image these are the maxillary sinuses images these are the root canal treated or this is the root canal dressing is done these are the different film and you are going to get the image of the maxillary sinus as well now we are coming to the occlusal um, image of the mandible you see you place the film right there and you have the exposure right from beneath that we used to say 90 degree exposure this is the occlusal film placed in the oral cavity and we are going to get the uh, image of the occlusal view of the mandible and we take the radiograph right beneath the chin and that is at the 90 d like this you place the occlusal film inside and you give the 90 degree exposure of the anterior there and that is the image you are going to get you see this is the film and that is the x ray you are giving and that is the image you are going to get you see this is our mandible this is the buccal side this is the lingual side 
here the, the alveolus and these are the certain fillings done on this uh, occlusal film and you can easily judge the lingual side and the buccal side. This is uh, an image. You see this is the stone-like structure available. These are the mandibular stone or the mandibular duct, Barton duct, um, sialithesis. These are the sialith of the mandibular duct. And these are the two stones available right in there. And this is the wonderful X-ray to evaluate any stone or any uh, problem present in the certain mandibular duct. So this is the very good uh, diagnostic tool for the submandibular gland problems. This is another X-ray. You can see the film. Here the film. There, there is also fillings. And uh, here you can see the buccal uh, lingual border. This is the buccal border. And you can imagine a very good occlusal image of the mandibular teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And that is uh, for today. We have covered the occlusal view. And we have covered the uh, 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 bite wing x-ray. And from next time, inshallah, we will proceed to the diagnostic value and we will uh, see the what uh, is uh, how to diagnose the diseases and how to diagnose the diseases uh, in periapical uh, radiograph of the maxillary teeth and the periapical radiograph of the mandibular teeth. And uh, that is uh, what for today. It is over to our organizer. If you have any question, you can ask me. Uh, thank you, sir. It was a very great lecture. Uh, sir, there are two questions which have been asked in the chat. I would like to first present to you that. Sir, yes. Dr. Muntada has asked, uh, Sir, which, which is the, uh, what is the best X-ray for impacted canine evaluation? Uh, will be occlusal uh, view? Uh, I actually, but I say that uh, for the impacted canine, these days uh, X-rays are not so uh, good. You can have the uh, CBCT. That is the excellent radiographic interpretation for impacted canine. It gives you the three-dimensional location of the canine, but I will not favor that for the impacted canine, if the CBCT is available, you can go for the CBCT, and that gives you the three-dimensional image of the impacted canine, and from CBCT, you can get very good uh, planning and how you are going to extract rather than going for the occlusal x-ray or the um, x-ray like the periapical and uh, OPG, I will fa favor that you uh, go for the CBCT. Yeah. Hello? Sir, there is another question. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Hassan has asked, uh, what is the best X-ray for impacted third molar for RCD? For RCD, root canal TDD. Root canal <laughs> uh, I I will say this is a very wonderful question. <laughs> Number one thing is <clears throat> that the orientation of the third mandibular molar is very very difficult. Repeated placement of the periapical radiograph in the third molar area is really very uh, astonishing. And especially when you want to get the uh, root length measurement and, uh, and placing the uh, 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 by placing the reamers or file to get the length of the root canal, it is sometimes very difficult uh, for the aid. So it is not so promising that while you are uh, going for the aid, you may have a, a, a very easy task to get the periapical x-ray. No doubt there is only one limit that you place the periapical radiograph with a parallel technique and that parallel technique favors more as compared to the uh, uh, bite wing or other uh, techniques. Uh, I think that is more promising one, but it is uh, no doubt a uh, uh, big task. 
uh, initially you have to take the OPG for your good orientation and then you go for the periapical radiograph and especially with the parallel technique that is more promising as compared to that of taking by the bite wing and the other axis. Sir, there is another question. Uh, Dr. Muntaha has asked, how can we prevent the overlapping of interproximal areas in bite wing x-ray? That is uh, actually uh, uh, very easy to uh, evaluate. Uh, because the intercuspation is uh, always there, so the overlapping of the interproximal cusp are uh, always there. If you change the angulation plus eight, so you get the maximum uh, relaxation of the overlapping of the intercuspation. So slightly upward shift of the cone in a bite wing X-ray will result into prevention of the uh, overlapping of the cusp. That is plus eight to plus ten. Yes, sir. Uh, if anyone has any question, uh, he or she can ask uh, sir now or if you want to like uh, open mic and like ask sir by yourself, uh, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, if anyone has question or if anyone wants to like uh, uh, ask sir, he, he or she is more than welcome. I can unmute him. Uh, you, you can unmute yourself as well. Uh, sir, I think so. There is no more question. Uh, thank you, sir, again for the uh, wonderful lecture. It was very great. Sir, there is another question. Uh, Dr. Sharu has asked how we can evaluate vertical root fracture. Vertical root fracture is uh, by three dimensional. It is always three dimensional. It is not one side. Sometimes this root fracture is a uh, absolute vertical from one side to side. Sometimes it curves in a seam pattern. One side is hitting on the opposite side and one side is visible. So if you take only one radiograph, it is not generally promising. And it is always uh, uh, rather confusing you. So you must take the periapical radiograph. You evaluate the one side that how much uh, the x-ray, uh, how much this uh, uh, vertical root fracture is there. Then you take the shift sketch method and slightly shift the cone and you will get uh, that this fracture line extend lingually or not. If it is a slab root, you understand you have uh, studied the slab root. If according to the slab root, this fracture line remain on the uh, same side and uh, it is not extending towards the lingual side, then you will come to know that it is only one single line and in one direction. If it is diverting towards the lingual side and it's extending towards the lingual side, then the second X-ray is taken by the bite wing X-ray. You will come to know that the extension from the crown, how much it is. And lastly, if you want to get the more accurate image, then you add the third X-ray and that third X-ray is occlusal field. So for the vertical fracture, first uh, fracture, first uh, line is periapical, second is the shift sketch technique, and third is the occlusal plane. You will come to know all the three-dimensional, how much the extension of this fracture line is. Yes.
Any question else? Uh, no more, sir. Question. Thank you, sir, for the today's lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, inshallah, next time we are going to start or we are going to study the periapical radiograph and everything with reference to diseases and especially with reference to the pulp lions, uh, bony lions, bony tumors, bony periapical lions, how to differentiate between infection, granuloma, cyst, and all these things. Inshallah, we are going to cover in the next session. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.